What's up guys, Escobar52 and welcome back to another deck review and another video today so thank you for joining us. If you haven't already make sure that you subscribe, give this video a like and uh, drop a comment down below as I always answer all of the comments in the comment section. Now today we are going to be reviewing Svengali 01 Forbidden by Alex Pandrea and Edda Huang. So guys, strap yourself in, get ready and as always, let's get into it. So like I said at the beginning guys, we have got the Svengali 01 Design Playing Cards by Ed O'Han and Alex Mandrea. Now I'm really excited to get these decks because not only were they a limited run of 2500, not only are they designed by Ed O'Han, who is one of my, I don't want to say he is my favourite, but he's one of my favourite designers that are in the playing card community at the minute. Um, and I love all of the subtle touches that he puts into his playing cards. The feel of this company is just like a designer feel, it's more like a luxury brand. It's been depicted as a brand by Ed O'Han. Alex themselves. The Svengali website does state that there is a version 2 and a version 3 coming out this year. So according to the website, November 29th for the second ones, which is called Nutri, and the third ones apparently December 25th. So Christmas money is definitely going to get spent there. And that is called Off the Wall. Apparently these designs are going to be crazy and they've got some cool little bits inside. So let's get into reviewing the Svengali card. The deck comes in this sort of really soft touch card um, case, card box even, and we've got some really nice features going on on the front here. So as you can see we've got foil stamp of the snake which is exactly the same on the back of the deck and we have the letters Svengali split up in the loops of the deck. Now on the side of the tuck here we have created by Edo Hahn and Alex Pandrea. We have the word Svengali down the side of this. O1 because obviously there's going to be more so when you can stack them up it's going to look really great and on the bottom it's just got some ad script work about the Spingali website and it's also got on there that's printed by the United States Playing Card Company. Inside the tuck it is just plain, there's nothing else in there, there's no hidden features but you never know that may come out soon and this is what we are faced with on the back design. Now this gives that feel of like a really sort of fresh, modern, new era sort of company. We've got that sort of red and white band across the middle. One way back design as you can see from the snake with the words Svengali. The deck comes itself with a blank card, a double backer, and it also comes with two jokers, non-identical though. One in black and one in red. Put them on the floor. Now the cards are made on a super thin crushed stock. I think it's crushed. It's super thin anyway, I can tell you that. And actually the cards come out of the tuck case quite quickly. Like when you open the tuck, they just drop straight out. These cards feel absolutely great coming out of the box. And being such a thin crush, it gives the cards a little bit of a better spring coming out of the box. So in terms of the actual court cards, these cards have had a little bit of an update and it does say that on the website, this they've got a vintage feel, but they've had a little bit more of a design going on. So as you can see here, we've got the coloring is a little bit better, They've been lined up nicely. Actually, the faces have got a little bit more character in them, and they're not this sort of like chunky king and queens that we've had before. Uh, in the face, they've actually got facial definitions. So, there are some nice touches on the court cards that I didn't mention earlier, but here's some two great little ones that I've just found now. So, as you can see, instead of the king piercing the sword through his head, he's actually piercing into his own pit in the top corner here, which I just think is a lovely little touch there. And for the King of Diamonds, we do have a nice little rivet card reveal. We also have some customised aces going in here. So we've got two non-customised with the club and the diamond, and it is the ace of spades and the heart that have got customization on them. The ace of spades has got the apple, which is very reminiscent. Now we've seen the snake, we've got the apple, it's called the forbidden. There's a very much Adam and Eve, Bible-esque sort of theme to this deck. So we have, you know, the story of Adam and Eve, we've got um, the forbidden fruit, 
forbidden, written up there almost like it was an entry from a dictionary. And we also have the Svengali snake around the heart. Now I think that's quite an interesting concept that the two, uh, these two guys are just melded together playing cards, a sort of brand new fashion-y sort of brand, and a mixed in there elements of the Bible. I just think that's like a really fresh and new idea. As well as that, we also have a little bit of customization on two of the cards, the three of hearts and the four of hearts. So we've got the words Svengali here, and we also have a chalice in the middle of the four of hearts. There's also one other customization in the deck, and that is on the four of diamonds. Right here, I've got this little poem in the middle that says, it was a dangerous sin wrapped in angelic eyes and it made my heart pound with distrust and my mind cloud with bewilderment. Now, I've had a little research and for the life of me, I cannot find where that little poem is. Um, I found loads of bloody Pinterest quotes on there, all quoting Al Nash, but now Nash doesn't seem to fear anywhere else. Uh, there was also someone saying it's an angel demon quote, but clearly is not from the film. Anyway, it's one of those lovely little touches that just builds that mystery into the deck, because like I said, it's like this little forbidden fruit. You've got this angel and demon sort of thing. You've got this, you know, Adam and Eve. You've got all these little forbidden features of the serpent of truth. So lovely little bits, they're all just little touches in the deck that just add to this giant mystery of like what is even going on and what the concept is and everything else about it which I love okay guys so like always let's get into the actual review for this card so I'm gonna give this in terms of aesthetic I'm gonna give this a, a big old 12 out of 13 I just love the absolute design work on it in terms of handling the thin paper crush is incredible um, I love it it feels so good straight out of the deck as you've seen in the clips at the beginning that was straight out of the box just doing some magic with them and it felt great pretty broken in, which I love. I'm gonna give it a 12 out of 13. In terms of durability, they've handled really well today. I've been using them quite a bit. I think they're gonna last quite well. Uh, I'm gonna give that an 11 out of 13. And then in terms of practicality, the one-way back design is so annoying for me who likes all the designs the same way. When I'm doing magic and I'm looking down and you go and do something and you show the back of the card and then you turn it over and then you take that card out put it in and uh, the back design's a different orientation and everything like that so it's just one of those things that just always really annoys me is when it's a really noticeable back design as well as that also I really enjoy having identical jokers I don't know about everyone else but it's just one of those things that when I'm doing sandwich effects I like having the joker being the same for when I'm doing sandwich effects card to mouse using the joker however it's still quite practical tech and the reveal is quite good as well so I'm going to give it a 12 out of 13 which gives this deck a total of 43? 45? 47. Which means that this deck gets a 47 out of 52, which is pretty good. Okay guys, so if you have enjoyed this video, please, please just give it a like. Give me a subscribe if you're not already. Drop a comment down below. Let's, let's just hang out in the comments. I normally am around in the first hour and I will respond pretty much to most comments that are commented on the video. Also stick around because I'll be announcing who won the Oddbods playing cards from my last video. And another reason to stay subscribed, I'm going to Norway and Iceland next week. So, two different places, I know. I almost said it like it's the same, but I'm going to Norway and Iceland next week. If you want to keep up to date with all of my little travel vlogging sort of thing that I'm going to be doing and doing some magic out there, hopefully, fingers crossed, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be taking the camera. I'm going to be filming pretty much most of my trip and also stick around on my Instagram, which is the link is in the description down below, where you can just keep up to date with me and, well, my trip next week. Okay guys, so we have entered all the names from the comments in the previous video in order to win the Odd Bods playing cards. And now I'm just gonna hit random generator and scroll down and the winner is... Gopesh Shukla. You have won yourself a deck of Oddbolds playing cards. If you send me a message on Instagram, if you're following me on there, and hit me up with your address, I will get them in the post as soon as possible. Anyway, guys, enough of that stuff. Thank you for being here. Enjoy your day, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!